but to this conference. I mean, yeah, yeah, Marxism is so last century, except it's not. Its terrible mindset is coming back. Like I say, treating people not as individuals, but members of a class or a race or a tribe or whatever. Identity politics, for instance, same thing. And I want to show you now the stupidity of it all, the mindless group thinking barbarity of it, as seen last weekend at a three day Marxism conference held at Melbourne University. More than a thousand people turned up and ignored how every Marxist revolution has ended in tyranny, how Marxism has killed more than 100 million people, and they chanted for yet another Marxist revolution. In fact, the conference even advertised the guest appearance from Joseph Stalin, I kid you not. Except it wasn't the genocidal tyrant of the Soviet Union, but a Sri Lankan education union boss whose parents named him in the dictator's honour. He was one of many international speakers at this conference, which was attended by these officials and members of our National Tertiary Education Union, representing university staff. That's scary. In fact, it got even worse. Some background. Last Friday, as this Marxist conference was starting, a Palestinian man deliberately rammed his car, this is in Israel, into a group of foreign tourists in Tel Aviv, killing Italian Alessandro Perini, who actually liked Palestinians enough to wear the traditional kefir. But that didn't save him, because with identity politics, of course, what counts is not who you are, but what you are, not Palestinian in this case. Same day, Last Friday, this time near an Israeli settlement in the West Bank, Palestinian terrorists shot up a car carrying a British-Israeli woman and her two daughters, aged 20 and 15, killing the sisters, leaving the mother critically injured. And Palestinian sympathisers quickly explained it away by saying, tweeting pictures they claimed were of the sisters armed with assault weapons as if they were Israeli military calling them terrorists. Well, in fact, those photos were fakes. Uh, these are the two sisters who'd been killed, different women entirely. The youngest was just 15. Of course, she'd never been in the army. Yet five Palestinian extremist groups, including the Marxist Popular Front for the Liberation of Palestine, backed those two attacks on Friday and said it was all Israel's fault anyway. Now, this Popular Front for the Liberation of Palestine, it says Israel shouldn't exist. It's listed by the US State Department as a terrorist group here. It's under sanctions as well. But the very day after those two attacks, this Marxism conference here at Melbourne University had as its speaker Lion Kayed, who'd once been jailed by Israel for reportedly throwing stones and being a member of a student group affiliated with this Popular Front for the Liberation of Palestine. And Kayed actually led this crowd at Melbourne University into a chant in Arabic calling for the bloody liberation of Palestine, which to the popular front means the destruction of Israel. With our souls, with our blood, we will liberate you, Palestine. And almost everyone in the audience, like sheep, joined in the chant. <laughs> That's identity politics. They don't know what they're quite saying. They don't know quite who's getting killed. They don't know quite anything, but they'll go along with it. That's groupthink. Ignore what this resistance actually looks like. Ignore who it kills. Just call for a revolution and blood because, well, you're Marxist. And they're not. The toxic inhumanity of identity politics that demonizes opponents as somehow faceless or subhuman. Marxism is dead? Well, it should be like it's tens of millions of victims. But I'm afraid the deadly tribalism is back, and this time dividing us into different tribes, including now, here in Australia, racial tribes.